This game, uh, Jinji is using the Jin defense, another defense name for him. Uh, and it, this was featured on the video as well that we just showed. D4, G6 starts out with a modern. And we have the pterodactyl defense. This is exactly what he just showed, and <clears throat> F5. <coughs> F5, hello, Frappuccino. <clears throat> F5 is the gin defense, but uh, nowadays most people call it the beef eater. I like it, beef eater, oh yeah. And that's A40 in your encyclopedia. Well, let's quickly switch to the database view and coming back to ants I don't know why that keeps blocking that Mark and Freeman view good to see you um, here's what I mean when I talk about the database and using this to go over your openings so from this tabia, you can see the results graph, the what we call the move pedigree. And um, H4 is the most common move, but not far behind it is E4. But you can see the percentage of time. White one, 31%. Black one, 55%. That leaves 14% of the time it was drawn. And these game, these are all games by masters. And you can actually click on these numbers, and it'll give you all 131 games that you can play through on your own. Or if you want to get down to a, a fewer, a smaller selection, you can continue in the database by playing the moves. And you can see after H3. H3 was only played nine times. And here you can see how those nine times panned out. Four times queen a5, three times knight f6, two times knight, uh, pawn to d6. And you can click on all those and see those games. <clears throat> Jinji Hashvili, Peter Balkis. Jinji Hashvili. Jinji Hashvili. Jinji Hashvili. Jin Ji Hashvili. Jinji Hashvili. Whenever you see the last name end in V I L I, you know that's a Georgian, Republic of Georgian name. There are a lot of Vilis in Georgia. <clears throat> yes. Jinji Hashvili. <laughs> but when growing up, we just called them Jinji. Yes, Sakashvili, um, Parashvili. Uh, there are many. Okay, Anspit, thanks for stopping in. Come again. We're here all week, every week. In fact, if you come back on Thursday, we will be carried on Chess TV as well. <clears throat> All right, so queen a5 in this position, queen d3, pawn to d6, pawn to g4, knight to f6, bishop to g2, knight b to d7, and f4 brings us to a unique position in the database. <clears throat> now, knight b6. And we just saw a video. Uh, not nice. <clears throat> not nice. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Where was I before I was so rudely slapped in the face by Draxus? 
And I thought you were a friend. <laughs> All right, um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I was so shocked. I was just sh shocked out of my gourd. Knight F3. Knight to E4, super attacking the C3 pawn. Only one defender. He uh, left it up for grabs. Playing knight to g5. And um, really, knight takes knight is better than taking the pawn. You can take the pawn with check and you win a pawn but notice what happens and so after bishop b2 pawns pinned I mean knights pinned by the bishop and you pretty much uh, I don't really know I mean I guess you could bring this knight in. That's a move. Okay. So there's a way out of it. <clears throat> but, yeah, this is going to be better. Leave this diagonal obstructed. His bishop is, is kind of bad, isn't it? He doesn't have any good where to go. By taking the so-called free pawn, you're actually mobilizing your opponent's bishop. And it's not worth a pawn to do that. <clears throat> so, knight takes knight is the better move. Pawn takes knight, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. And bishop takes pawn. And boy, there's a, that king's feeling a draft. He had to castle to the king's side. He castled out in the open. Both sides are open. Meanwhile, Jinji has his king safely tucked away amid the queen's side pawns. So it's a beautiful demonstration against Daniel Shapiro. And queen takes h3 check, king b8, rook f7, queen a4, rook takes pawn, queen takes pawn, white center is falling, well yeah okay I understand what I'm saying archmage in that earlier position you can take the pawn it's just not as good leaving the pawn there actually benefits you more than taking it and there are some cases that giving up one of your own own pawns is better than than keeping it on the board because you know those pawns can be obstruction your own pawns can be getting in your way. So that's why you see sometimes these masters will just let a, a pawn go here or there just to create pathways. Other they're, otherwise, they're just obstacles to their own pieces. Queen e2, bishop f4. And notice the relationship here. So this pawn is pinned from behind so this pawn can be captured and it is captured <clears throat> now rook takes b7 check just makes no sense to me at all capture i, I don't understand that that rook move and after king a8 pawn to c4 rook h to f8 queen to g3 
And queen to e4, white resigned here. Uh, so I did put this final position into the computer and had stockfish play against stockfish. Um, <clears throat> and this is what stockfish did against stockfish. By the way, when I put stockfish against stockfish, stockfish won. And this is how stockfish won. This is how the game could have, one of many conclusions that could have happened. I thought that was an interesting computer move to give up the rook for the bishop. And I stopped it here because clearly these pawns are going to run. The king cannot cover both sides of the board. And so, you know, before, before this pawn could even be an issue, this king would have to make... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven moves, eight, nine, ten before that pawn could ever dream of becoming a queen. In the meantime, how does the king stop both wings? He can't. As soon as the king approaches this side, this pawn's going to run. <clears throat> 